Welcome to Soul Cafe Radio. You are listening to From the Heart, a daily podcast designed to inspire, encourage, and educate the people of God. And now, he is your host, the Word Master. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are and whenever you're listening. You're tuned into Soul Cafe Studios from the Heart Podcast and our Wellness Wednesday series. Today we have a guest that you would have heard on this program, you would have seen on our YouTube channel. He's none other than Brother Alvin Johnson. And today he's back again. And as you see, he's talking about the topic of the spirit of empathy. And I actually asked him where... This came from, and you'll be surprised with the answer. So you'll hear that message shortly. Just want to give you a note that we had technical difficulties in some parts of the presentation. So you'll hear that as a distraction a little bit, but it does not take away from the entirety of the message. So I hope it doesn't damper your listening experience. So after this short break, we'll come back with Brother Alpin as he shares with us from the heart his experience having the spirit of empathy. Stay tuned. You're listening to Soul Cafe Radio, food for the mind and soul. All right, welcome back, friends. Today, I'm with one of my favorite guests from my church, Brother Alvin Johnson. You've seen him before on the YouTube channel. You've heard him before in a different podcast. Today, I'm on because it is our Wellness Wednesday presentation, as we said earlier, and we want to talk about having empathy for others, being in a place where But I've never asked him to share where he's coming from in terms of this 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 podcast. We we never discussed his empathy. And so this morning I'm going to ask him about just about that. So first of all. Morning, brother Alvin. How you doing? Good morning. I'm blessed, man. Highly favored. Amen. Praise God. So, as I was sharing, the question is, where, wh- when, and how did you come to be in this position where you? I mean, we all know. You know, we all know. In, in, we feel it when you're, when you're in tears and you're feeling for the people. Where does that come from? Talk to us about that for a little bit. You know, <clears throat> I wanna. This something started from a long time ago, maybe <clears throat> before I become a Christian. Even before I accept the Lord, you know, I was working in the garage in Miami, and so. 
oftentimes the boss seems to really add a little pressure. And, you know, I told him that I really don't like to be pressured because when I come to work in the daytime, if I have not done a reasonable amount of work that satisfy myself, I, I, I feel like I'm robbing him, you know, of what he's paying me for. So I don't need to be pressured. When I'm pressured, I can function as if I'm really working. I feel like I'm I, I, I de develop a, 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 a sense of <clears throat> considering the next person, whatever he's doing, because his business is what he does for a living. And me working for him, me working for him, put money in his pocket and go on vacation. So if, I, if, I'm, if, I'm, if I'm being paid and not really telling how the work I'm doing, I have that kind of guilt on me. And so it's something that's been going on with me for, from I was much, much younger. But now that I accept the Lord, I really <clears throat> start to realize more and more how it is, it is important for us to really think about others and not ourselves alone. And so it, 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 it becomes like burdensome to me as, you know, especially for my family, my close friends, you know, and so forth and so forth like that. Now that I start the church now, I start to realize more and more that is what the Lord wants us to do. As we think about ourselves as if, we are all that, but think about others. Think about the need of others. Think about how we can help, help others <clears throat> to really, you know. I'm not a teacher, but I, in my field of working, I have, God has blessed me with talent that I could share, you know, with others and stuff like that. So I'm really grateful of that. And so for that reason, I developed that kind of passion of seeing somebody else's need. No, I'm in the I'm in the service of the Lord now. It get deeper because I realize the time we are living in, and people have not really recognized. So, it become person when I read it. When I read it, the Word of God, and especially when I think about Lazarus when Christ arrived at Lazarus' grave four days late. And he wept, not for himself, but for the unbelief of the people. And so as I grow, as I, I, I realize that I, as I draw, as I get closer, I have a deep, and I have a deep understanding of who he is, his burden become my burden. So I encourage all the people in here have a voice. Maybe say, come on, you are. And if they ask, see not, you shall receive. So as we as we as we allow ourselves in his hands, there comes a time if we are sincerely seeking him and seeking eternal life as he has promised us. Then we will become more burdensome for souls who he have, whom he has died for and who are in darkness, not recognizing that they are in darkness. So it becomes burdensome to me. And especially when you're sharing with not friends, but relatives, your own family, and recognizing that they have not really realized the time we are living in and how serious it is to have a savior, how serious it is to 
have somebody who we can run to. Not recognizing our weakness because we get up every morning and we can go about and stuff like that. Not recognizing the time is getting closer and closer to his return. And he was only coming back for those who have allowed him. He loved everyone. He died for all. But only who, only those who have accepted the gift of life can he took with him. So I just want to share this appealing to us. The burden of others. Amen. Thank you, Brother Alvin. And just before I let you go, where do you see, where do you see yourself? Like, what going forward? Do you think that you're gonna? You know how Jesus said in His Word, and that's what I'm getting at. He says, "Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall grow cold." Do you ever see a, a time in your life where love for souls? What again, remembering, you know, that pressure, you know, that, that you were under. Do you ever see a time where you would abandon that feeling, you know, and just want to leave people alone, but you don't want to reach them? You know, do you ever see anything in your future like that? And why or why not? No, 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 no. You know, because, <clears throat> you know, talking about prayer, God knows how many people praying for me and others. So I, 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 I strongly, strongly believe that is a prayer of other broken hearted, those who are burdensome too. I strongly believe that my calling was of those prayer that the Lord could have rescued me from ruin. I know to give me that desire, that urge for reaching out or to helping someone who have not really recognized their weaknesses. So I, 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 I can't see myself ever even thinking about giving up and to even to help one soul. I think about the disciples came to him and say, how much time should we forgive her? Or 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 brother that seven times. And the disciple was told, try seventy times seven. Now I don't think once one person could have paid so much time for it for the day. But he has never had time in my life. I can ever imagine or think that I will ever give up from sharing or encouraging my fellow men. To accept the Lord because that's our only way out. There's no other way out. Even when they found, found rebellious, you know, I asked the Lord to strengthen me to endure because they had rejected him. They had rejected our Lord Jesus Christ, but he didn't give up. He went to the cross of shame. So if he could give his life, Or a sinful man like me, I have to personalize this now. How could I even make it come to my thought of giving up? And especially, like I said, especially if it's my family, especially if it's my associates who we get together, we run, play, play ball together, we fish together, we eat and drink together. How can I even stop encouraging them? even though they have their own thoughts and their own ideas. So there's never a time I could ever see myself giving up on an individual. You brought up something that made me want to ask another question upon that. How do you handle rejection? You know, that, that, that person outright, you know, so I don't want to hear that. You keep your religion to yourself. Keep your car to yourself. Keep your business to yourself. You know, I'll, I'll worry about myself. You know, how, how, how does that impact you personally? Well, you know, um, that's a very good question because it put it, you know, something it put more burden on me. 
I feel more burdensome knowing that they have not really recognized just a simple little message, a simple little invitation. They haven't really recognized the simple invitation towards the soul salvation, towards eternity, towards happiness that we never have from ever since we were born because all of us here on planet Earth, born in sin, Adam and Eve was the only perfect being that God created. They were not born. But every single person that born on planet Earth, born in sin, have not really have a taste of what real happiness really like. I have to really quote the scripture there as it is written, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither entered into heart, the heart of men, the things that the Lord have in store for us. So none of us have ever experienced what the Lord have in store for us because of or for experience and so you know I, I feel like just strengthen me when I'm being rejected when I'm being criticized and so on. I still have to, I still pray for those you know and a matter of fact you know something one of uh, one of uh, not only one but two of my colleagues who they criticized me uh, multiple times Multiple times they are in a situation where they did not call their wife, they did not call their kids, and I'm at work and they call me. And I'm just thanking the Lord that I'm able, I was able to run to rescue them from their situation, what they are in. Yet, two or three days later, they're back to criticism. You know, so I realize, you know. And it came in a couple of years ago when it when locked down, you know, a question was asked about Christ's abuse. And the response that I received from the, you know, he said, it's a cry for help. When he was being abused, his abuser was crying for help, but no one really knows. And I I, 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 I really realize that the truth that sometimes, you know, when even you and somebody get an argument, when they get reload, when they get reload, something else is taking place, you know. They're trying to cover up something by getting reload, by getting to reading a voice about your voice than to even listen to what you have to say. Thank you for that insight. And just to let the listener know, once again, you're listening to Soul Cafe Radio. This is From the Heart and our Wellness Wednesday edition. Today's our guest is one of my church brothers, Brother Avin Johnson. He's actually one of the deacons from our church, and he's been on before, but sharing different ideas, different testimonies, different thoughts of asking to share on, but never one this personal. So as we get ready to wind down, Brother Avin, as usual, I always ask my guest to give a closing thought and then give a closing prayer. So right now, the floor is yours. Closing thought and closing prayer. Thank you again, Brother Vernon. <clears throat> what I'd have to really hear, what I'd have to really say to those who don't hear enough of voice is to, it, 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 it might seem rough, it might seem that you can't do it, but none of us really can do it. None of us of ourselves can do anything at all. But when we accept Christ, when we, if, if we come to the knowledge of realizing that we need a Savior, because each morning we wake up, you know, many people say, thank God, but many people have not even said that because they're late to work and they're ripping around and going and not realizing that is the giver of life wake them up to go to work. So that if they could even spend a few minutes just to give him thanks, thanking him for life, thanking him for the ability to be able to go to work, thanking him for providing a job so they can feed their family, to pay their bills, to keep a roof over their head. I think it's worthwhile think about these things that without him, you would not have been wake up because many people have darkness, no no day, they are just night. They went to bed even last night and many don't many have not wake up as yet. And they not even realize that they're in that, 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 that stage until that great day 
and it all depends on if, if, if they have pause in their sin, then they will not be in the first resurrection, but will be the second resurrection. And it will be too late when they realize that they are gone. So I would, I would encourage, I would encourage, whether you're a believer, or you just hear the word, or you like to hear some encouraging word, to ask the Lord to help you. When you ask the Lord to help you, he will not forsake you. The day you set your heart, the day you said, you said, Lord, I'm being sick and tired of being sick and tired. I want to know you. I want to be with you. I only hear about eternal life. I have no clue of what eternal life is. But if you're eternal, then it means that eternal life is have to be something good. So Lord, just come into my life. You know, I surrender my life to you just this moment. And the moment you surrender your life to him, the moment you, a matter of fact, before you, before you finish praying, prayer has been answered. From the time it comes in your thought, an angel has been sent to protect you and to lead you. So all we got to do now is pray for the prompting of the Holy Spirit to light, to lead, guide, and protect. And he will do it. As the well of the prayer, he will not forsake. He will not forsake. Because it is there that none to perish, but all to come to repentance. So when you pray that prayer for him to come into your life, that he there, the whole heaven are on guard, are on the alert to assist you. So I just want to thank you guys for 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 spending time to listen to my few little words that I have to share. And now, as we listen, I want to just have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for the freedom you have given us to choose, to make a choice. Lord, whether we reject you or we accept you, you love us the same. But it brings joy in heaven. The whole heaven rejoices when one sinner repents, Heavenly Father. And so, Lord, this morning, I want to thank you for this opportunity I have received from my dear brother, brother Vernon, Heavenly Father, to share my thoughts, where I'm coming from, and the, 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 the desire, the burning desire that I have to encourage my fellow men to accept our Creator. So, Lord, I want to thank you this morning again, Heavenly Father. I want to pray the holy name, Heavenly Father. And as we go forward in this unshrined day, Heavenly Father, we know not what the next moment brings, Heavenly Father. But I pray, Heavenly Father, that you anoint my lips and the lips of the hearers as they receive a word from your throne to your man servant, Heavenly Father. They too can be used. They too can be a channel in which you can work to for perishing souls out here, Heavenly Father. Lord, I thank you and I praise you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ, our coming King. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answer prayer, O oh Father, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today on Soul Cafe Radio. You've been listening to powerful music and messages for the mind and soul. Join us next time when we deliver more of the same. And remember to visit our website at www.soulcafeonline.org.